It's wet. <laughs> it's really sour. That's why I like it. <laughs> well, you know what that sound means. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Jill's right. It's Game for a Movie, the podcast where we ask, are you game for a movie? I'm your host, Mike. I'm joined by Jill. Andre. Yes, that was amazing. Oh my god. <laughs> when people god. ask <laughs> when people ask, do we have a catchphrase? Yes, yes, we do. Mm-hmm. Uh it is our bad movie episode. We are drinking things. Yes. Uh Jill, we're go with you first. I'm still drinking the same thing from last week, I guess. <laughs> well, no, wait, this is gonna air first. Oh god. So it's we're in a time portal. portal. We're in a time but all right, so we recorded our uh movie banter episode episode already that's going to come out next week uh so you're drinking the same from that but let's let these listeners know so right now i am drinking uh from labyrinth brewing which is a connecticut brewery sour batch number three it is a sour ipa brewed with apricot plum and lactose and it is delicious and tart wait is the is the logo sour pet no (laughs) you'll guess that later Mm -hmm. uh andre what are you drinking i am drinking uh the iconic honey shot from alvarium brewing company in new britain connecticut nice alvarium fan people yes you are and as we'll be saying next week we are alvarium fan people i mean you might as well be wearing an alvarium t-shirt it's true this is very confusing with this whole thing (laughs) Mm. uh i am drinking from stony creek brewing in uh, beautiful Branford, Connecticut, Space Potato. Oh, we're all Connecticut at the table. Wow. It's called Space Potato. Space Potato. Uh, I love the side. It says, way to go, Idaho. This hazy New England IPA is chock full of Idaho gem and galaxy hops, and it'll suck you in like an event horizon of flavor. Whoa. 7.2% and tinfoil hat ready. You know what? Wow. Event Horizon, we should watch that sometimes. I Ooh. love that movie. I, I, I realized I didn't, I didn't say what the Honey Shot was, did I? You did not. You did not. The Honey Shot <laughs> is a New England Dippa. Dippa? New Dippa. England double IPA with citra and wildflower honey. Dippa. And it's delicious. It's great. It's, wanna, my, it's my favorite Connecticut Yeah, beer. I was going to say, if you want a Connecticut beer, it. this is it. Yeah. I think that's it. That's a good one. Uh, mine's Headway. That's usually my Headway's go-to. Also great. Yeah, that's a Connecticut beer that I usually recommend. Uh, I also pulled up Event Horizon. It is the most that I've seen in a while split from Rotten Tomatoes critics to audience. Mm-hmm. Critics say 29%. Audience say 61%. Wait, wait this is Lawrence Fishburne. Yeah, Lawrence Fishburne. Fish, yeah. Lawrence Fishburne, the man who can't cut it at... Who that is, that movie is way better than a 20... Wait, wait, you said 29 for, for critics? For critics, yes. I see why the fun. critics didn't like it. Because also the film, ver- the theatrical version is not... It had parts edited out. So, like, yeah. there's a whole, like... There's parts that, like... They added, uh, had extra stuff footage filmed that oh, okay. didn't get in. And when you see that extra footage, it doesn't really add much other than like you get to see like the just like the monstrosity of the situation. Yeah. But I, it also does kind of further like why the stakes I, are what they are. I okay. feel like I feel like the Dead Space video games have made that movie retroactively way better in my head. Than, <laughs> they so directly they pulled from that yeah. movie. So I, it's hard yeah. not to really like that movie, in my I, opinion. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, so. Speaking of movies that don't really have much of a split on their Rotten Tomatoes mm, number, yes. let's talk about the bad movie. Uh, I watched the bad movie this week. I'm so sorry. It was 2005's crime drama, Edison. No yes, everyone, everyone knows this classic film that came out. It is a 13%... Critics, 36% audience. I had no idea this movie existed before you said, hey, I found it. Well, I found it for free on Vudu and on Peacock. Okay. Uh, Vudu had commercials. I watched it on Vudu because it kind of came at the worst possible times. Yeah. It was great. Uh, I have a few marked spots when I get to my notes of this movie. Is it called Edison or Edison Force? Edison. Edison. It was oh, no, called Edison, Edison Force. Force. In the United States. Are you ready for this? This is this is a good story about I'm this. I'm braced. I'm braced. So Edison released at a film festival, fully prepared to get like distributors, stuff like that, get it to theaters. Everybody expected full theater re- release. Went to the film festival, straight to DVD release. Wow. <laughs> That's how bad it was. Wow. Talk wow. About not reading the sign. Yeah, they did not. Uh, it is written and directed by David S. Burke. Uh, David S. Burke, your script was miserable. 
And he's known for writing other things, such as... Okay, what do you he got? He also directed it. Yes, that's what I was saying. He wrote and directed. <sighs> Sequest 2. Yes, Sequest. Sequest 2. <laughs> Wise guy. Uh, he's written a bunch of episodes of The Glades, which I used to love The Glades. That was a good show. Uh, some Law & Order Special Victims Unit. Uh, La Femme Nikita wrote a couple episodes of that. Jake and the Fat Man. That was a TV show back in the 90s. Yeah. Uh, Miami Vice, he did some episodes for. Yeah. So he's got a, he's got a niche. He's, he's, he's got a crime niche is what we will say. Crime. Uh, he also wrote, what was the one that I wanted to mention? Um, maybe he didn't write it, but he directed it. Uh, he, directing wise, he seems more of a TV man. Than a yes, I would agree with that. Um, sorry, we're pulling this up as we're doing this. I should have had this ready. Okay. It was a presidential thing. The prosecution of an American president, mm. which was a story of George Bush um, during the basically the war uh, when George Bush said we'd go to war. So... All right, there we go. David S. Burke. He's a dude. Uh, this movie, because we need to mention who's in it. Right. Star Study Cast. It actually kind of is a Star Study Cast. It really is. Like, even the small characters are big names. Yeah. So it's Morgan Freeman. Uh, Kevin, give us some Spacey. Yep. <laughs> Justin Timberlake. Tim. LL Cool J. Dylan McDermott. John Hurd. Carrie Elways. Rosalind Sanchez. Carrie, no. Damian Wayans. Who's related? Yes. Uh, not <laughs> Damien Wayans. Damien Dante Wayans. Damien Dante Wayans. And Piper Parabo are the names I want to mention. Uh, so let's get into it. This came out when? 2006? 2005. 2005. 2005. And it is very much 2005. It's interesting. Yeah. Anthony Head is not Anthony Stewart. No, John Hurd. I don't know why I thought it was John Hurd. <laughs> yeah, no, it is John, or, uh, John Hurd. Um, so the very beginning of this movie, we get a bunch of production company, like, you know, their title screens and everything like that. Mm-hmm. I didn't recognize a single one. Oh, boy. Bad start. Yeah. Yeah. Millennium Productions was the one that sticks out in my head right now. Okay. I'm going to look that up. Um, so the beginning of the movie, there's – it introduces you to Edison, which is the town. The one in New Jersey? No. I think this is in California. Okay. This is a made up town. So what's funny about this whole thing is Edison, New Jersey had a similar thing happen like a couple years before where there was a corrupt police force. So everybody thought it was just a story of that. No, he picked the name because he thought Edison sounded cool because Thomas Edison. Okay. Okay. Yes. Not coincidence at all. We are introduced to Edison. There's a bunch of signs that say Better Edison Foundation. They're trying to make Edison the best it can be, including they're trying to get the Olympics. We learn later in the movie, but I'm jumping ahead here. Mm. That's ambitious. Yes. Um, The beginning of the movie starts with, I don't know, it must be St. Patrick's Day because there's Irish dancers. There's, okay. there's Irish dancers doing like this dance on the stage right next to a bank that is being robbed. Mm. Mm. Uh, these guys have like machine guns. They have body armor, whatever, that kind of stuff. So they send in their special unit, Frat. That's, 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 what, that's, that's, what, what, that's what does that like, break down to me? Uh, I have it later. The, in the, the acronym? I have it later. Um, let's see if I can find it's it. It's an acronym, right? Like yes. Acronym. First okay. response and tactical unit. Okay. First right. response and tactical yeah. unit. So frat unit. So frat unit. Oh, so they just say frat unit. Okay. Yeah, the frat unit. That's cheating. Bring in frat. It's, yeah, bring in frat. It's frat too. Like nose frat too. No, they didn't. Frat. They frat. just say frat. Frat. Yeah, it's easy enough to say. Uh, All right, what's like the tagline stars, for this movie? Like, uh, well, right, but stars. Whatever, well, anyway, it's fine. All right, what's the tagline for Corruption, this? Corruption, righteousness, lawless. In this city, only the cops are above the law. Also, the grammar in this tagline is horrible. Well. Okay. Jesus. Only the cops Jesus. are above the law. No, Holy the shit. Look at, this Look at the commas. Yeah, it's rough. Com- and like, is this supposed to be here? Is this two taglines? <laughs> Only the cops are above the law. Jesus Christ. So you know we're dealing with the corrupt police force. Yeah. That's okay. what we're dealing with. I have an inkling. Yes. Uh, so these guys are robbing this bank. Frat comes in. It's Dylan McDermott and a 
rookie LL Cool J. He's obviously new to the frat unit. They grab their guns from the back, and it's just this all-out shootout. And basically, like, they're they're killing these guys. Nobody's hitting the frat units. Dylan McDermott has a sniper rifle. Oh, no. Yes. Okay. Yes, this police force has all the funding. What I will say at this point... It's how they're above the law. ...is I applaud the movie so far. Yeah. Okay. They have reloaded. It's not just like bang, 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 bang. bang. They reload. Like, there's actual... They're counting. Yeah. So I will give it to the movie. At least they were paying attention to that. There's a lot of other things that they were not paying attention to. This is not a commando situation? This is not a commando situation. So um, one of the lines came on the screen and said the music was done by Machine Head. I don't know who Machine Head is, but I just find that name hysterical. Sure. Um, Okay. So one of the bad guys... The last bad guy remaining, and Dylan McDermott shouts at this point, come out, come out, wherever you are with his sniper uh, rifle, because he's just blown, like, holes in people. It's literal explosion. You know, I've killed men high. Exactly. Uh, The last guy has an Irish dancer and is, like, holding her hostage. And so Dylan McDermott is, like, right here, as close as I am to Andre right now. With a sniper rifle? With a sniper rifle. Okay. Well, how could it take a while to shoot in all that? Well, so he literally just goes, it's going to be okay to the Irish dancer. Shoots her through the shoulder cool. to hit the guy behind her. What? And he just, like, explodes, <laughs> essentially. But she doesn't explode? No, it just goes through her shoulder and then, like, opens a hole in this guy's back. But, but, how did not frag through her? Yeah, right. What is this magic bullet? Yes, exactly. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that's the introduction to them. They're obviously badasses. They're the frat unit. Like, mm. this is, yeah, whatever. Okay. Uh, it flashes forward to that same night. Uh, LL Cool J and Dylan McDermott now are breaking into an abandoned place where there's squatters that are selling drugs. Okay. Um, so they break in. They're, re- they're robbing these crackheads. Uh, basically, these crackheads are in their boxers. They're like shirts off they're obviously sleeping in this house uh they get held down at gunpoint like hands behind their head and everything like that they steal the money because okay. they're corrupt they don't do anything with the drugs they're just like whatever and the one guy talks shit to mcdermott and so he's just like all right rookie kill him oh. Kill him and like LL like Cool J. Like Palpatine's him, like like <laughs> kill him. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Like he's trying to he's trying to get him to like. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Cr- sure. Break your cherry, then you're officially part of frat. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, Oh, you murdered somebody in cold blood. You're this is initiation. Yeah. yeah. You have what it takes. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, LL Cool J kind of resists, and you're just like, okay, so we know our weak link in this mm-hmm. at yep. the very beginning yep. of the movie. So Dylan McDermott goes, all right, fine, kills him, cold blood, he's yeah, dead. Classic. Second guy, he hands him the gun, but LL Cool J's gun, not Dylan McDermott's gun. Uh huh. Because there's even a line of, don't worry, rookie, you'll get a new one. Mm. And basically says to the other crackhead, um, he came at you with a knife, right? And you shot him because you got this gun. He came at you with a knife, right? Blah, blah, blah. And the guy's just like, yeah, whatever, whatever. Just want to survive. Tell me. All right. He came at me with a knife and I shot him. Okay. Let's him go. This is wonderful acting. Steals the money. Yeah. My acting, or because it was better on screen. I was about to say, like, like, Joe, are you judging Mike's? No. Yeah, wow. No, no, this is. I, I personally am enthralled right, right now. I, but imagine, so they shot him with Dylan McDermott's gun, which is obviously a different caliber. Like it was a yeah. six yeah. shooter yeah. essentially, yeah. and they give him LL Cool J's gun, which was like an automatic. Oh God. Okay. Yeah. And. Yeah. Oh any, so that's not going to pass any muster for any sort of ballistics investigation. If they were to actually do it. Yeah, but, right, you know, movie. Right. Yeah. Uh, so they're in court and basically LL Cool J is testifying and saying why they let the other guy go. And it was because he said, Jesus, 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 like, help me. And like, he oversells it. It's really like over the top and everything like that. And Dylan McDermott gets mad at him. And he's just like, just straight testimony. You don't need to do no, this. Yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. Uh, Justin Timberlake is the reporter in there. Okay. Talking about the crime. 
No, he is a reporter. He's a he's he's, he's gonna be our main guy. He's gonna he's gonna uncover he's gonna, he's gonna uncover up. fart. I mean frat. Frat, yeah, yeah. fart. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Justin Timberlake works for the Jewish newspaper. What? The Herald Gazette. It's literally called like the Herald Gazette. I mean, it's Jewish. It, they mention it. They say it's a. That's kind yes. of weird. Explicitly. Yes. Okay. So is he a good Jewish boy in this movie? No, because they're saying it's like the paper nobody reads, and oh, it comes. Okay. It comes back to he couldn't get a job at the Times because he had one sentence of fact in his story, oh. where the rest is speculation about Frat being like suspect. Suspect okay. because as LL Cool J is walking off the stand, the uh, defendant who was just acting in self-defense to kill the guy with a knife says thank you to him because oh. they're going to get him an easier sentence yeah. so uh, Justin Timberlake JT in my notes plays a hotshot reporter who thinks he can outdo his editor his editor is he Jewish? Morgan Freeman no he's not very Jewish <laughs> the Jewish boy Morgan Freeman uh, Morgan Freeman's like, you don't do the work. You just give me all this speculation over a one-sentence true story. So he fires him. Oh. Let's him go. Okay. Short-lived career. Yes. <laughs> yes. He says, you're never going to get to the times like you want to because you just do all this speculation by blah, blah, blah. Uh, so it flashes to Justin Timberlake and his girlfriend, Piper Parabo. Okay. Who is Piper Parabo? You said you'd be aware. She's, um, She's been in a lot oh, of things. Gosh, yeah. One of those, like, oh, she's in a bunch of stuff. Yes. Uh, yeah, hold on. So her main thing she was in that I remember, Coyote Ugly. Yeah. <laughs> she was in The Prestige. Yeah. She and was then she was in a short-lived USA show called Covert Affairs that my mom used to watch all the time. Oh, and I actually thought that was pretty good. She was in Looper. She was in Looper, yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, she was in Penny Dreadful. Yep. Um, she's been in a ton of stuff. Like yeah. you, you'd recognize yeah, her. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. And she's she's she a, a, she's a great actress. Prestige. Like, yes, yeah. And again, great actress. Yeah. Um, for whatever reason, their candle or their uh, apartment has like thirty candles in it. Because it saves on electricity. Yeah. I guess, but like it, it didn't make any sense to me. Um, JT thinks he has a story. So he's like, all right, I'm going to go to Morgan Freeman. I'm going to apologize and I'm going to try to get this story made and like see if he'll help me on this. So he goes to his apartment. Uh, Morgan Freeman has like this super nice place. He apparently has done all these stories in his career. He does the Jewish newspaper as like a service, not as like uh, anything else. Mm. Uh, his character's name is Moses, by the way. If that wasn't on the nose. I'm sorry, Morgan Freeman's name is yes. Moses? Oh, okay. Morgan Freeman is playing a Jewish man. Yeah, no, his last name is Moses. Um, I can't remember his first Robert name. Abraham. Uh, was it Abraham? No, I don't know. Just, I wouldn't be shocked by that. Ashford. 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 Okay. Moses. Ashford Moses. That's a great name, though. That is a pretty good name. I would read a not, whole not, not gonna lie. Ashford, Ashford Moses. Ashford Moses, Ashford Moses would be a good like down home detective. Yeah. Down, down on his luck. Yeah. Tool for this shit. Yeah. Um. So he's explaining that Pollock is the name of JT's character. JT's explaining to Moses uh, that he wants to do the story because he thinks he has a real story here. And Moses is like, who told you you have a story here? And he's like, oh, my girlfriend. And <laughs> Morgan Freeman has the best line of the movie. Oh, you're doing this for pussy. Wow. <laughs> and like in the Morgan Freeman way. So you're doing this for pussy. Doing it for wow. Uh, I, I really can't imagine him saying that line as a, or rather well, the word pussy. You've never but... seen Dreamcatcher because once you've seen that movie, any, this guy yeah. is the limit with okay. Morgan Freeman's acting career. It's true. I'm not saying that he couldn't act it. I'm just saying. No, no, no. Like... I mean the, like, the absurdity. Yeah, okay. <laughs> So, um, basically, Morgan Freeman's just like, whatever, like, if you do your work, fine, whatever. He puts on a record because he's like, get out of my apartment, that kind of stuff. Mm. But they continue talking. The problem is the sound editing is terrible. The record is overpowering everything because oh, they just want to have, like, their soundtrack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so I couldn't hear what they said. this music, damn it, we're going to play it. Yeah, right. We're going to license music, yo. So he walks out of the apartment. He takes an elevator down. It has, like three shots happening at once and like there's transitions happening i'm like this is gonna give star wars a run for its money on transitions <laughs> oh boy yeah because there was like he was in the elevator then all of a sudden he was like at the library and moses was dancing and <laughs> there was time in the script to shoot 
Yeah, Morgan Freeman Morgan dancing. Dance sequence? Oh, there was a there was a dance sequence. More than Nicole Kidman, it sounds like, in the movie we recorded for next week. Yes. Um so w- this is where we learn what frat stands for. Uh the crackhead that is in jail, because we never learn his name, but the crackhead, his mother had a stroke out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. And so all he wants to do is get out of jail to get back to his mother. And he did nothing wrong as far as he's concerned besides sell crack. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Besides not crack. That's funny. All right. Okay, sure, sure. Yep, innocent, yep. innocent draw, innocent crime right there. Uh, so he, crime, yeah. he tells, so it. he has a guest at the prison that was telling him about the stroke. And that is Pollock, JT. Okay. He's telling him what happened and why he said thank you to him and everything like that. So JT's like, I got it. I got this witness. We're good. We can take down frat. He goes back to Moses' house, and Moses is listening to him and was just like, you have one side of the story. You need to get frat side of the story because who's going to believe a crackhead? Which is true. Yeah. Who's going to believe a crackhead? But who's going to believe an obviously crooked cop system? Right. And so JT's just like, no, we've got him dead to rights. We have this witness. And Morgan Freeman says, oh, that's right. You're doing this for pussy. (laughs) Of course, JT finds a Pulitzer Prize just hanging out in his house. What? Yeah, so he picks up the Pulitzer and he looks at him and he goes, I'm doing it for this. Whoa. Casually, Morgan Freeman's character has a Pulitzer. Yes. And yet he's still working for the, he's the editor for the Jewish newspaper. Like I said, he's doing this for, like, good faith? This is retirement. This is retirement. Yeah, exactly. He's already retired, so why not? Morgan Freeman, he's constantly old. Some people who retire work for Disney. This guy decided I'm going to work for this Gazette. All right. Um, so the first time he left Morgan Freeman's apartment, he took an elevator, remember? Yeah. The second time, he just gets pushed out of the door in the rain. Oh. So they're, now they're on the ground floor? Yeah, there's continuity error. I just wanted to point yeah, it out. Yeah, that's a little annoying. Okay, got it. Yeah. I also said this movie could be PG-13, but they just keep saying fuck. Okay. Like, yeah, over and over it. again. Yeah, it's a hard R. Like, it's hard R just because they keep saying, oh, fuck, fuck, fuck this, fuck first. that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sure. Um, so we get introduced to the mayor. He is running for re-election with his Better Edison campaign. Mm. Uh, the mayor has a private investigator that... Is the mayor played by Kevin Spacey? No, the mayor is played by Carrie Elways. Okay. Carrie! Yes, Carrie Elways. Um, the mayor has a private investigator that is willing to work with Moses and Pollock that is played by Kevin Spacey. Mm. Okay. His name is Wallace. Where's the space not? Wallace has the worst hair on the face of the planet. It's Uh-oh. like a Johnny Bravo esque. Like, yes. What? It goes up and then it wraps around. All right, I'm yeah, looking at I'm looking this up. Yeah. Guy, uh, if you can find it, please let me know. All right. Kevin Spacey Edison, right? Yeah. Okay. If you can find it, I couldn't really find an image, but if you, you can find it. Trailer. Oh, jeez. Oof, that's not good, man. Uh, he kind of looks like John Cusack. Mm hmm. With that hair. Yeah, that's Yep, not, that's it. Uh, yep. Oh, that's a winner. Uh, I'm not a fan of that, but yep. okay. Um He's got that kind of Yeah, okay. All right. What's what's the what's his deal? Uh, he's a private investigator working exclusively for the mayor. Okay. He has offered to work with Pollock to find out what he can about frat. Does he have a stereotypical southern accent? No. You know I mean? He does not. No, why, it's, why is it? Because he has a little like I don't know what to call it, like bolo? that. Oh, it's almost like a bolo tie. Yeah. Well, right. That's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Like, like, like no, he does. This picture. I'm imagining him just doing a, a shitty. Southern he talks accent. like Kevin Spacey. Like yeah. it's normal okay. Kevin Spacey. Okay. Yeah. Kevin yeah. Spacey. I shouldn't say shitty. I imagine him doing his House of Cards, Georgia senator. Impression. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know? So we flash forward to it's just a night off. Um, JT and Piper Parabo go to a dance club. Just to get some, let off some steam, start dancing, everything like that. <laughs> oh, it just so happens LL Cool J's there with his girlfriend. Mm. And not only his girlfriend, his now fiance, because he proposed to her at a fucking club. Ladies love Cool J. Ladies <laughs> love Cool J. So he proposed in a club. Yeah. I just it's want that to be known. Me. Yeah. Who does that? How did he get them to turn the music off? So that's where I want it. No, he didn't. <laughs> So she was able to hear that, that, him. That's no, a, that's he just a... shows her the ring and then he gets on her knee uh, and then she like kisses him and like, yeah. Yeah. Wow, Jill, that's beautiful. 
Um, I said at this point, I said at this point, this feels like all the worst parts of Fast and Furious 1. Yeah. Because you know they're kind of going to like get together, but there's no sandwiches, there's no Corona, there's no family. There's no VHSs. (laughs) Yeah. DVD players. DVD players. I'm so sorry. You're right. So JT and Piper leave the club because like he's like, I need to get out of here. He saw the whole proposal, but he's like, I need to get out of here because obviously I'm investigating this guy. I don't want him to see me. So they leave. Um, we know that LL Cool J and his girlfriend are still there. They're walking outside. JT and Piper are walking outside. All of a sudden, they get absolutely mugged. Like, just beaten to a pulp. Whoa. And it's it's graphic. Like, it's... You see them get hit. Um, okay. And that so, so, so this is the part that makes them read it R. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. Sure, I guess. I don't yeah, know. language could be one reason. Well, right. You said you need to like, they just say fuck all the time. And it's right. Like, hey, well, at least they're showing the violence, right? I, I don't know. That sounds like a weird thing to no, as a get, plus, yeah. but you know what I mean. So, we're the R rating. So they're beaten left in the street. We see one of the people that beats him takes off his mask. It's obviously Dylan McDermott. Yeah. We know it's the frat members. Yeah. We learn that Piper has a blood disorder. Okay. So she's out for the rest of the movie. Three. Bye. She's not dead. But she's in a coma. She's in a coma. She's now a plot device. Great. Yes. She's a sexy lamp. Lex, sexy lamp. Yeah. Lexi Samp. Lexi Samp. <laughs> Lexi Samp. I said that's that's going to be. I know, no, be, I said Lexi Samp. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's going to be the name of the character in our parody uh, movie that becomes the sexy lamp, Lexi Samp. <laughs> Vampire Boys 3, Vampire when we Boys finally 3, make it. Lexi, Lexi Samp. Samp. Yeah. Yes, because I can't so speak Vampire right. Vampire Boys 3 going to be like a spoof of Edison? Is that what it is? Maybe. Sure, why not? With are vampires? Crooked cops? Yeah. Are they the ones who take down the crooked cops because they can't get a photograph because they're vampires? They're all. No part, shots. They're all part of an elite task force that called Vamp. 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 Called, called Vamp. 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 V
I mean, it was obvious to me that he was somebody that was a higher being. He's destroyed all kinds of people's lives. It's terrible. A group shouted in mystery. We used to call them the veggies or the, the vegetarians. The vegetarian mafia. With some rather unorthodox practices. With crystals and purple cloth and, uh, you know, a, a chiropractic table that you used, that they used for laying you on to do this or balance. Crazy, man. Sheets that I can't believe it. You know, like rubbing down your entire bathroom with a toothbrush and all the time chanting something, some words or something. And the seemingly normal Toronto suburb that they call home. It wasn't somewhere I would walk at night. So I always felt a little bit like the junction I associated with being on sort of the wrong side of the tracks. Chasing Enlightenment, a new podcast from host Daniel Monroe. You can find more information and updates at ChasingEnlightenment.net. All right, we are back. We are on the edge of our seats because JT was in the hospital. Piper Parabo is in a coma, but LL Cool J and JT are forming a a special friendship. A truce. Mm. A truce of some variety. So... Basically, Moses has said, all right, we need to get you, Pollock, off the road. Like, we need to get you somewhere because they're going to find you at your apartment. So Wallace, played by Kevin Spacey, offers his cabin in the woods, (laughs) which is this, like, beautiful cabin in the woods. Doesn't have a car, so he can't escape. That sounds like you're walking right into a trap. Well, it's just, it's basically like, we just want you to be here and nowhere else. Yeah, just safe Like, do do some research. We'll find you when it's all clear, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, they established Kevin Spacey as this amazing investigator. And one of the things he's able to do as this amazing investigator is walk right up to the surgery doors for Piper Parabo and, like, walk Right there. He's literally just outside the surgery doors. Okay, yeah. Um, Pretty sure a head nurse would stop that. Right? I guess all of them. You'd think, staff, right? Give some space. I mean, he's them. also not, like, family. <laughs> give us some space. Uh, uh, yes. Um, Morgan Freeman shows up once a week to, like, talk to Pollock about his story and everything like that. He keeps, like, baiting him. Like, if you want to get to the Times, you got to do this. you got to do that. you got to do this. Do they like, actually name drop the Times? Like, yeah, they, it's they just say, the Times. So they it's don't not, say New York Times. They it say, could be the Edison Times, for all we know. Yeah, Podunk Times. Wow, all right. Yeah. Remember, this is a town that is, like, on the verge of getting the Olympics. Sure. For the greater good? For the greater good. That is Hot a, fuzz. Got it. All right. That was very good. You've seen the movie now. I have. You're right. Um, while this is happening, Isaiah, our crackhead. Oh, he has a name. He does have a name. I didn't think he had a name, but apparently he has a name. Uh, was stabbed in prison. <gasps> he got shanked. He got shanked hard. And now he's dead. And now your source is gone. And he never saw his mom. Oh, and he never saw his mom. Oh, yeah, who had the stroke. He was innocent, aside from the selling crack bar. <laughs> <part. laughs> aside from the selling <laughs> crack bar. Did we ever find out who he sold the crack to? Because no, we found out. Man. No, we he found out he fell on. So we fell. We found out he fell on oh, some hard times. Yeah. He was helping his cousin. That was the guy who was killed in cold blood, and like was just helping him until he could get back on his feet. He was looking for jobs. He was doing the right thing. Oh, he's like the Joker. Mm-hmm. Wrong place. Wrong. Time. Exactly. Wrong vat of acid. Wrong vat of acid. Um, <laughs> so far, Morgan Freeman has taught this newbie reporter two things. Follow the story, no matter where it takes you, but also make sure you have a safe house in the middle of the woods <laughs> so you can hide. Always yep. in your back pocket. Always in your back pocket. Uh, Spacey's hair is terrible in this. Dylan McDermott tried. He went full crazy for this movie. Okay. okay. Like Wyatt Russell crazy? Yeah. And Captain America? Yeah. And like he like like oh, does yeah. drugs and that okay. kind of stuff. Like his eyes get sunken as you watch further and further in this. And like he he gives an all out like performance. He's losing reality. He's yes. losing touch. But he finds out that Pollock is in the middle of the woods. Mm-hmm. And so he sneaks into the house. Luckily, somehow, some way, Pollock was able to hear it and get away. I mean, Justin Timberlake probably has, like, hard of hearing, so right. there you go. Mm-hmm. So he's, like, hiding, 
he's getting away from him like in the house but there's no car remember yeah mm-hmm. but he gets to the garage and what does he find a car a bicycle oh a bicycle a bicycle okay does it have like a little bell on it ding, ding. it does not have a bell on it as far as i can tell he doesn't use it <laughs> what? mind you uh-huh. This is in the middle of the woods. Dylan McDermott had to drive here. So His car's out front. Car. Yeah. Yeah. No, what he does, instead of taking the car, because I don't think he knows how to hotwire a car probably. That's the excuse Isn't anyway. Is that part of like, the reporter handbook? That's part of the excuse, I guess. He sticks a bunch of hay into the gas... The back? The, the gas, like... Um, cap yeah. area. Yep, yep. So he sticks a bunch of gas in it, lights it on Wait, fire... Yeah. Fuel tank, yes. So he makes a Molotov cocktail, a Molotov thing out of the car? Out of the car. Okay. So he, like, loads it with hay and then lights it on fire, and then the car explodes. Dylan McDermott finds out, and then he's just biking away as this car is exploding in the background. Nice. <laughs> How is this not picked up the theatrical release? Oh, my God. It was wow. amazing. Yep. Um... Okay. How's he acting this so far? You said you said Dylan McDermott is trying. Dylan McDermott's trying. Is there anybody else trying? Is JT, it's his first movie. Oh, like yeah. it. Okay. I don't know if it's his very first, but it's pretty early on. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And it, you can tell. Yeah. And he's going up against Morgan Freeman, Kevin Spacey. Well, right. As much okay. as we don't like Kevin Spacey, no. Kevin Spacey. Yeah. yeah. It's tough. It's tough. Right. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. You have to, you, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. So we're, we're the elephant in the room is that. You know, whatever, like... And, like, Justin Timberlake's gotten better. He has. Oh, that's true, but this is pretty early on. This is pretty early on, yeah. Yeah. I like The Rock and... um, That's what I was going to say. Yeah, and, like, Scorpion King, yeah, yeah. Well, not even Scorpion King, but I would even say Fast Five, honestly. Like His first appearance is not the best. It's not the best. He does not, like... I'm I'm glad he's in that movie, but... His acting is considerably I mean, better in Jumanji versus Fast mm-hmm. Five. I'm, I'm also, say. you know, he's also a little slutty in Fast Five. Oh, well, that's yeah, a well, that's true choice. Too. Maybe. Oh, no, oh, I don't know. It was a direct, I don't. I feel like it was a direction choice. I think was it Fast Five anti- or Fast Six with the cast? Where he just breaks that's out of the chest. That's fast, fast six. six. Because Stephen yeah, okay. puts him there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. puts him there, yeah. and then he breaks it out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's a pretty sick moment. That, that is a pretty sick. Moment. Oh, that was amazing. Yeah. 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 So fucking dumb. Yeah. That's the perfect kind of dumb badass, you know? Like. <laughs> All right. So we go back to frat. Your himbo energy. Sorry. We go back to frat. None of the people in frat are married. Everybody sees it as a weakness. So the fact that LL Cool J proposed is a weakness. I think it also just means that now we have what? another. Well, no, it's not a weakness; it's liability. Yeah, we have we sure. have an okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's you a loose end. You can't have a family. Is the yeah, idea. exactly. Okay, I got it. Right. Um, McDermott will kill you with a moment's notice. Yeah. Oh, I also have to include at this point because it was like doing like it was flipping between scenes. So as like they were talking about the fact that LL Cool J's proposed is weakness, they also flashed to Moses telling Pollock, uh, he told him earlier. Like, you started the story, you have to follow it through to the end. Mm -hmm. Now he's like, you know, you can walk away. If it's getting too dangerous for you or your girlfriend, you can walk away. And, like, everybody's like, what? (laughs) Like, no. Okay, yeah, what? I'm only this far down because you told me to go this far down. So now we need something for John Hurd to do. Mm. Yeah, he's in this. Yes. John Hurd is the leader of Frat. Uh He is a public face. He is like the schmoozer, you know, he's He's close with the mayor where it's just kind of like, oh, mayor, like, thank you for this unit. Like, we really appreciate you and everything like that. We're we'll keep the streets safe for you and your better Edison campaign and everything like that. Uh Mm. Um, So basically, because of the Piper Parabo situation, it made front news of the Jewish paper and everybody was catching on because the fact that she was beaten out of nowhere and like this is a true tragedy it's looking bad on the mayor that kind of stuff uh john hurd knows that dylan mcdermott did it and it's just like all right dylan you're desk bound because of your transgressions you should have known Uh, okay like she didn't need to be touched you just attacked pollock not went too far yeah exactly you went too far um the camera angles on the scene were like up at Dylan's face and like down at John Hurd's face. It was like all over the place. Powerful. It was not great. Um I mean some problems over there. I'm alright. <laughs> we were trying to figure out if Frat has connections everywhere, because LL Cool J is able to walk in this restaurant to talk to Pollock and was just like 
and all these people left the tables. <gasps> uh, it's just like a randomly selected bar that JT chose, and all of a sudden he's just able to like clear it out. Gone. Huh. So they're able to talk. LL is on board. He is going to work with Pollock slash JT. All right, got a mole. At least a little bit. A little mole jack. We learned from LL. <laughs> I don't know why that got me, but it did. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. We learned from Ella Bolje uh, that the courts are corrupt, the mayor is corrupt, and officially the cops are corrupt. He's officially admitted oh, it. Mm, mm. Yes. And Carrie, no. Um, so they're kind of like learning. He learns all the stuff about it. They go their separate ways after a while. Um, Dylan McDermott, basically, when he gets back to the office, is like, I know what you told him. Stitches get snitches. <laughs> what, flip that. Stitches and, get snitches. Yes. 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 Stitches get snitches. He says that verbatim. And it's it's it, verbatim. Yes. <laughs> uh, snitches get snitches. So he threatens LL Cool J and is just like, you know, I brought you into frat, blah, blah, blah. And wouldn't it be a shame if your pretty little thing got injured? Fist fight. Oh, yeah. They are taking it out at the frat office, including some things like uh, Dylan McDermott. Because I'm looking at these two going, LL Cool J is winning this. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, you know, yeah, Dylan McDermott. Right. Well, Dylan McDermott, for his like contributions, is using items. So like he grabs a phone and just like bashes from outside. He has an inventory. Yeah. No, but like they're, they're like yeah. fighting in the office yeah. and like he like, grab, he like grabs a phone and like smashes him against the head. Yeah. Yeah. He <laughs> grabs a stapler. It's funny you bring this up. He grabs a stapler and staples him in the neck. Oh. And like it, it's... There's your R. Yeah, it is brutal. Uh, um, does that LL get like a scissor? Well, there's... Okay. And then there's a final point where it's like they, they're... Dylan's up against the wall. LL Cool J is like about to like punch his lights out and Dylan flips out a knife. And we're just like, oh shit, it's on now. And then boom, gunshot. John Hurd has fired a shot and killed Dylan McDermott. Straight through the head. Like, he's dead. How much is left in this movie? 30 minutes, maybe. That's our cat, if you, if that's getting picked up in the background. Got a box, got to sit in it. Yeah. I mean, she's eating it. She want it, yeah. So Dylan McDermott is shot in the head and literally my jaw drops. I am actually like, oh shit. Oh, wow. All right. Yeah. Okay, movie. Uh, <laughs> and so this is the thing I have said at this point in the movie. This movie must have a miserable finale because so far it's been pretty decent. Not great. But not nearly as horrible as I expected sure. from these yeah, rock tomatoes. Yeah, yeah. I'm also drunk. Yeah. Because I was probably six deep at this point. Okay, sure. But like also the so far, what you told me about this movie is that like, yeah, it's a by the numbers like right. it's not a it's not a great movie. No. It's not meant to be. No. But it's not anything so far off the page that you're right. just like, yeah. That nobody picked this up to yeah. play in theaters for uh, even in February or something like that? Nothing. So, yeah. Yeah. So LL Cool J calls JT to have him help him with something. Move the body. Uh, no. Because they get rid of Dylan. Basically, the mayor's freaking out because he has a body outside his office because yeah. the mayor works in the same building as Frat, apparently, mm-hmm. which is something entirely different. He's yelling at Wallace, played by Kevin Spacey, just like, there's a fucking body outside. Like, this is not good for my campaign, blah, 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 blah. Sure, you sure. know, you know, just caring about the, the important things, not the fact that there's a dead man outside. Yeah. Um, so LL Cool J calls JT and is just like, look, we need to talk come to the courthouse like we're gonna get a statement from a courthouse person or something like that Mm -hmm. that's what i thought no they're doing a courthouse wedding and jt is the witness basically ll cool j has decided like he doesn't know what's going to happen he wants to make sure they're married like get it done quick because then she can start getting his benefits that kind of stuff just in case this goes south and JT becomes a witness, and he's like, what the fuck? Why am I your witness? Don't you have any friends? Yeah, right, exactly. Um, <laughs> and so I put at this point, I will say losing Dylan McDermott has lost an aspect because the guy stepping up to take on LL, uh, this random Asian dude that's going to become the villain. Uh, the movie? Yes. He's right. nowhere near as charismatic. Is third-act villain? kind of he's just the next in command like okay. they don't give him anything he's just not nearly as charismatic or anything like that um 
So basically, Frat is going to try to kill Justin Timberlake. Mm. And they're, they're going to all put the blame on Dylan McDermott and just be like, look, this reporter, he was killed by this guy. When we caught on, we shot him and killed him. Yeah. We're also going to kill LL Cool J because it's just loose end. Um, so they go to like this. Um, oh, so he goes back to his apartment. <laughs> There's a moment where his email goes, you've got mail. And it made me giddy. <laughs> this is uh, J Tim, right? J Tim, yes. Uh, the email is basically all the stuff from Wallace. He writes the story. He sends it out to all of the editors at all of the big newspapers in the town. Police is corrupt. Mayor is corrupt. He hired the police to basically clean the streets so he can look good for his re-election campaign. And um, – the courts are corrupt. They control everything. Frat's bad. All this stuff. He basically writes a story and is just like, okay, cool. I'm going to send it to everybody just in case something happens. Um, they were in a cabin in the woods and Dylan McDermott found them after like two days. Yeah. Yeah. They couldn't find him at his own apartment that he's been at for like a week. Yeah. Okay. tracking guy. Yep. And so then, like, they have nobody watching it. Nothing like nothing like that. So I was like, OK, whatever. Um, the Asian dude who is less charismatic finds Justin Timberlake at his apartment. Okay. LL Cool J comes out of nowhere, luckily, to kill him in time. So they're like, right. OK, we got to run. Makes a save. Makes a save. Uh, basically, they get to a warehouse where Fratless, like, lines up and is just like, OK, we're going to kill him. LL, you can't do this. Like we're gonna, we're gonna stop him, and we're gonna save Frat and blah blah blah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this shootout finale interrupted by a commercial. <laughs> Look nice. at all the, the tension. Literally, there's five minutes left in the movie at this point. Yeah. What was the commercial for? One of the movies on Voodoo. I think it was Spencer. Okay. Oh, the Diana. Movie. Yeah, like Spencer's now on Voodoo. Check it out. Blah yeah, blah blah. Okay, yeah. um, we get back to the movie. Uh, there's like they they get into the warehouse. They're hiding behind pillars. LL Cool J is just like, I'm gonna help you. Blah blah blah. <laughs> Sorry, you're I'm good. About to knock down some magic the gathering. You're good, Sophie. Sophie, we're almost done. I promise. <laughs> I know you don't like this movie, but I promise it's almost done. She's just so uh, uh, emotional She's about the transgressions that the frat, the frat has been making on the city of Edison. So they're hiding behind pillars. Mm. These pillars, like obvious, have CGI bullet holes in them. Oh god! Because it's just like poorly cut out. Almost six textures Five. plastered yeah. on the buildings. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They could have done like. No, all the budget went to paying more agreement. Yeah, right. I guess. Yeah, yeah, right. Almost probably. Yeah, but I think they could have still blown up a pillar you know with bullet holes like fake practical effects or something yeah i don't know if we're gonna pick you up sniffing the microphone (laughs) if she's praying real loudly it's gonna hear it's gonna show right but i don't hear her from here so i think we're okay um i'm watching you do you need me to move her? I don't no, know I what you're doing. A bird I can I can banish her oh, from the shadow we'll to the shadow realm. Oh, I got her. Oh, come here. Let's be oh, friends. Let's so be sweet. friends. So let's be friends. Yeah, let's be friends. Okay. Um. So basically, they're pinned down behind these pillars. We're like, what the hell is going to happen? Uh, there's no way these two, a reporter who doesn't. Uh, shoot things and LL Cool J are going to be able to take down all of Frat. Fucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, like, she's, <laughs> she's she, having fun. You give her an inch, she gives, she gets, she takes Yeah, she was on, having you know? fun. Yeah, no. Apologies. For You're good. Me. No worries. I'm just going to have to cuff a little bit of it out, so I'll probably just restart that line. Yeah. You okay? Do you need a minute? Oh, yeah, no, I'm fine. No, she was fine. She was a bite. Yeah. I know, but, you know. Yeah, Oliver bites me all the time. Yeah. Okay. okay. And up we go. <laughs> Keep going. Okay. Start. All right. So they're pinned behind these pillars. You're just like, okay, this reporter who's never shot anybody and LL Cool J, the rookie member of Frat, are not going to be able to take on a whole police force. Yeah. But then, I don't know where it came from. I think he had it the whole time. LL Cool J pulls out a flamethrower. Whoa! 
Oh, okay. Wait, like, wait, what? Obvious CGI of the flames, but a sure. flamethrower. Sure, sure. But like, I don't understand. Like, like did he have a jacket on or something? Like, yeah. like we don't. Is a two-handed weapon with a pretty significant. T- like it's a backpack, and then like a like a. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Regardless, you'd one does not just casually pull that that's out. Not of a, that's not a. That's not a. That's it doesn't not come a, out of nothing. Where did it come from? I that's don't not know. A nine millimeter pistol you have in a concealed carry. That's yes. A fucking like. Or you have it hiding in your boot. Yeah. Like, yes. No, right. Exactly. Do Here, hold on. Yeah. Give me a second. I need to hook this up. Yeah. 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 Right. 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 So he had a flamethrower and just starts like killing casually people. Flamethrower. Cool. Uh, one of the people that gets away is John Hurd. Yep. Because of course he does. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And he finds JT who snuck away and is holding him hostage. You know, the whole situation, human shield, gun at his head, like I'm hiding behind, except for he's like pretty fairly pronounced outside of behind him. Uh, But that's a different story for a different time. Um, So LL Cool J has his normal gun now. He's killed all the rest of frat besides John Hurd. He's Yes, yes. (laughs) You call it... uh, Creme brulee. I call it crime brulee. Like, Whoa. that's what he's done. I can't take credit for that one. Okay. <laughs> yes. Crime brulee. Wow. Uh, he has crime brulee everybody. <laughs> um, JT is like in the hostage position. LL Cool J is just like, duck. And of course, he ducks and he's able to shoot him right between the eyes, which were not very hard to do because he was like, like I said, JT was like here and he was very pronounced behind him. You could have shot him in the heart, the head, like, yeah, it wasn't a good hostage situation. Is any hostage situation a good hostage situation? No. Well, JT and LL are talking about it afterwards and LL says to him, keep your door locked, kid. That's the line. I had quotes on it and everything. The mayor comes by because he wants to see what's happening, of course. Yeah. And his town. Right. Exactly. And he's thinking he's screwed. The jig is up. He wants to find what's happening. Um, the reporters and Wallace all decide, basically, we don't have the funds to take him on. So there's no proof you did anything, mayor. Just let him go. Because he is trying to make Edison better, even though he was, like, corrupt and everything like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the mayor lives to see another day with no repercussions Mm -hmm. whatsoever. Um, LL Cool J goes to his fiance. Um, JT is able to see Piper after her coma. Everybody lives happily ever after. Mm. End of movie. Okay. They print his story. Frat is done. Frat's done. Uh, LL gets back. No more, there's no more corrupt policemen in Edison anymore. Right? Yeah, LL gets to join the regular police force oh, again. Is not corrupt? Is a good old honest cop. It's it's not the corrupt unit, we'll say. Okay. We don't know if the, we don't know anything else. Yeah, this town only has one Edison line. two did not happen. <laughs> Right, we couldn't find out, you know, if L. Bull J. T- tries to take on the, the systemic yeah. issues oh, with our police force. Dude just has a problem for signing up for corrupted police. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, exactly. He's so, got the problem there. Yeah. So the only people that don't get a happy ending are Isaiah and his mom, who died of the stroke. Yep. She died. Yep. She dies. Confirmed. Yep. Confirmed. Cool. Yep. R. I. P. Yep. Her son was dead too. Yep. Smaller son got shanked. Well, and crackhead too, which we didn't know his name, but a cousin. The first uh, crackhead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, first crackhead. Cousin crackhead, yeah. cousin crackhead, who did nothing wrong but sell crack. Remember the Adams family? He did nothing wrong but sell crack. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Honestly, like we, what you've said about this movie doesn't mm-hmm. seem it seems bad, this but does not seem. This is not Osambi. This is not Osambi. Osambi. This is not exactly no. right. So, I'll be honest. Like I said, I was like six deep in this movie. Yeah, sure. I enjoyed it way more than I thought I would. <laughs> it is not a good movie. Yeah. The talent definitely raised the script. Uh-huh. The script's not great. Yeah. No. Um, the dialogue's goofy and everything like that. The dance club proposal was ridiculous out of nowhere. <laughs> so, overall, I know you guys are wondering, mm. what's my rating for a movie that I say is not that bad? Mm-hmm. Okay. You say two. I think it's a 1.5. If I were were to judge from what you've said so far, I think it's like a 1.75. No more of these stupid half numbers. Jill is right. It is a two. 
Wow. Yeah. Two cool. out of five hostage situations where you just shoot them in the shoulder. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Classic. Every yeah. Hostage resolution. Yeah. They teach that in, in at the FBI. Mind you, this was like a like teenage girl that just got shot through the shoulder. Yep. Yeah, casually. Yeah. Her, casually. It's not like they shot her leg. Her damn career is fine. This might be the highest rated bad movie. We've had... I'm trying to remember where Fantasy Killer Island... So, how, where did Killer Sofa hit land? I think I think I gave it a 2.5. Okay. I was just going to say, I think Killer Sofa is the winner still. Killer Sofa is probably the best yeah. movie yeah. I've yeah. seen, for sure. Yeah. Some of that's just because I love, I love Jed Broffy. No, no, no. I I, it was that movie, that movie, that, for a bad movie, that, movie, that, that was a movie yeah. that was exactly what it was. For, for this sure. for this movie, it was it was pretty decent. Yeah. Like, it's not a great movie. I'm not saying go out and see it immediately, yeah, but for free, for if you're bored... Hidden gem. Yeah, if sure. you're bored, you want to... Text I, I, I'm kind of shocked that it didn't get picked up by somebody to even yeah, even just to fill right. in. I'm not saying this would be a summer blockbuster, but like just to fill in. The yeah, February schedule. you're exactly right. Like you a know? February schedule movie, this probably would have done fine. Yeah, like it, it, I don't know. Kind of like Uncharted. Yeah. Well, and I will say, so what's tricky about Rotten Tomatoes and why I don't like using it, but it's the only real thing we have to use. Yeah. It had eight critics reviews oh, okay. and like five thousand plus. Like audience reviews, yeah. which is not huge. That's not huge, no. Yeah, and a lot of what people have been saying is just like it's better than I thought it would be, you know. Okay. And like, sure, yeah. sure, yeah. fine, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so I give it a two out of five. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I already said that. Never mind. Um, but yeah. The what did um? Oh my god, what's his name? Dude from Foo Fighters. Dave Grohl. Dave Grohl say when he was on Smartless, not everything has to be imagined. Not everything. Not every song has to be imagined. Not yeah. every movie needs to be right. Titanic. Uh, speaking of Dave Grohl, I can't wait for Studio Six Six Six. Yeah. I'm going to check that out. Yeah, yeah. it's 82 percent on audience his critics episode of or audience is a riot. Yeah, I highly recommend. Yeah, it. it's hilarious. I think the critic score is a little down on Studio Six Six Six, but the sure. audience score is like 81 percent or something. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It, they made that movie not for. The, I don't know. It was not don't for don't critics. Know. I like. They, no. they, they made okay. A, they made a movie. <laughs> yeah. I like. I, I like watching movies that that have that have disagreements on both scales. Right. Yeah. Right. I feel like what. And that there's a movie that has a really high critic score, a really low audience score. I really want to say that movie. I would say probably yeah. Green, Green Knight's probably the most recent example of that. It's a good one. I, I yeah. would imagine that. The critics liked it, but the audience definitely. Yeah. yeah. And then obviously the inverse, where it's like, okay, yes, yeah. this is not going to be a critic darling. They're not going for the Oscars on this one. But right. It's, it's good fun. Yeah. 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 It'll be interesting to see what Studio 666 it's just, does. It's not like schlocky horror films yeah. are, are usually yeah. a good time. I think it's going to beat its production budget. I think it will. And that's uh, that's what I'm curious about. Is it going to like kill its production budget or is it just going to be fade into obscurity? I don't know. I think it, I, I also think that Hopefully they didn't. I don't know what the production budget is, because mm. um, they were already like renting out the house to record an album. I think right. So I don't think they have. So yeah. So that might have been rolled into the the budget, and then I don't know how they shot it, who directed it, right? Who wrote it, and like I mean the band themselves or the actors. So like hopefully this is not you know a twenty million dollar film. Maybe right. It's more like five million dollar film. Speaking of budgets, mm. you want to learn Edison's budget. Well, it had to. Okay, so it had to be pretty. It had to be somewhat substantial. Or 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 they or they wrote a bunch of people in on contracts Kevin for studio contracts or something. Are gonna have know. big salaries. At this point, yes, Morgan Freeman and Kevin Spacey would both have a big salary. I Williams would have done it for relatively. J Tim. Yeah. J. Tim, I don't think would have because he was relatively new. This is, yeah, he brought this sexy is back still... at this point, but I don't yeah, think right. Like, sexy, sexy yeah, was already brought that, back at this point. Mean yeah, a big career, big acting. I don't career. know. That's still a name you use to get butts and seats. <laughs> this was early acting days. Sure, I'm not. This was his first big movie. Okay. The rest of the things he'd done had basically been music videos. Yeah, that's yeah. True. Okay. I, mean, I say Carrie Louise would have been relatively inexpensive. What's the budget? Give me his career was on a downturn. So the overseas gross, because there wasn't a domestic gross of that. That's not the budget, but okay. I know. I'm getting to the budget. Don't uh-huh. worry. Uh-huh. I got to go the opposite way. Yep. $4 million. One hundred and forty three thousand four hundred and fourteen dollars. Keep in mind that they that this is because That's it wasn't released in theaters. Yes. It just went straight to DVD. Yes. Okay. That was international. Yep. Budget? Yep. Thirty seven million. Yep. Woo. Okay. Damn. I was gonna say forty million. That's a little cheaper than I thought. I was I I might I would have thought like 40, 45, 45 yeah, yeah, somewhere yeah, in there. And, not, and most of not most of it, but a good And in two thousand six money. Yeah. 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 
I, I wish they would have spent a little more on CGI for the flamethrower. Sure, right. Or yeah. just get a real flamethrower. <laughs> yeah. Or explain where the main flamethrower comes from. Yes, exactly. But yeah, so that would be Edison. Cool. Um, not electrifying. Not electrifying. No, wow. I can't wait until Tesla comes out. The, the <laughs> sequel. <laughs> the unofficial sequel. The town of Tesla. The town of Tesla with Sorority its corrupt. It's going to be a harder acronym to figure out. Sorority. Sorority. Oh yeah. my God. Uh, you mean it's Greek? No, it's called Yeah. <laughs> well, there's Fred and then... Squad of Rebellious Order Rioters. And... Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think of a good one for like. Immigration In... Tactical Service. Well, there's you need to figure out. The oh, why? why? <laughs> Integral Tactical Yesterday. Yesterday. <laughs> there you go. You got it. Yeah, perfect. Done. Yeah. Done. We need to make more bad analogies on this one. Or uh, bad, uh, uh-huh. yeah. No, uh, Vamp was still good, though. <laughs> I want to make that movie. Vehicular and manslaughter patrol. Patrol. <laughs> <laughs> well, so that'll do it for this bad movie episode of Game for a Movie, where we ask, are you game for a movie? Shout out to Chasing the Enlightenment podcast. I guessed it right. I've been your host, Mike. I've been joined by... Yeah. And Andre. We will see you next time on Game for a Movie, which we've already recorded. Yay! See you guys.